How's it going, guys? So this video, I um, want to really talk about the reliability of the old vintage Minolta X700 and X570 or slash 500 in outside of USA. The reli reliability of those cameras and uh, the biggest single most common problem and probably almost every camera that you're gonna buy online facebook marketplace ebay offer up is gonna have the exact same issue that is those super cheapo capacitor um in those cameras that pretty much guaranteed to fail right now it's year 2021 going to 2022 uh after 30 40 years those capacitors are guaranteed to fail so what you need to do to make those camera work again is actually go buy yourself some really quality capacitors uh, that you can replace very easily replace those cheapo capacitors that the Minota used in the 70s and early 80s um, once you get those replaced the camera is actually gonna gonna be guaranteed almost guaranteed 80 90 percent of the chance when you get a camera uh, the light meter doesn't work the shutter release doesn't turn like it gets stuck so this one is a broken one i haven't replaced this one was having the exact same issue but i replaced the cheapo capacitor on the bottom of the plate and now the camera works perfect as you can see and it advances and the meter inside works all because of this cheapo capacitor okay so this one is guaranteed to have a broken one um unfortunately i would highly suggest you guys avoid 700 because it's got two capacitors and both of those are probably needs to be replaced sometime in the life of this camera especially you know in year 2021 to 2022 the 570 in the other hand very easy to replace because it only features one capacitor at the bottom of the camera. All you have to do, unscrew one, two, three, four, four screws, have your solder gun ready, desolder the old capacitor, and then you can easily put a brand new Panasonic high quality, high tolerance capacitor in there and the camera immediately work. So when I got this camera, uh, on eBay, it came dead because of the capacitor. Um, all I did was spend probably, this is $1 each, less than $1 each. I bought one of those and uh, put the brand new one in and it works immediately. So it's like a super easy fix for the X570 slash 500, but it's gonna be a little more involved with X700. You might be able to make you might be able to make it work by just replacing the bottom one, uh, but because it's got another capacitor on top, you have to unscrew the top plate with a whole bunch of special tools that you're probably not gonna have and replace both of those. And the one on the top, on the X700, is very hard to replace because that capacitor goes to the bottom of that circuit board. It's gonna be tricky uh, it's, it's gonna be tricky for me because I have basic soldering skill. I don't know how to solder the capacitor from the bottom plate uh, on the top, which is gonna be tricky, okay? So what am I gonna do for the X700 is I'm just gonna replace the bottom one and fingers crossed, hope it works. Because right now, with battery in here, it just doesn't work. Like with the, with it on, in the power on button, like mode, it doesn't beep. It's supposed to beep when you press something and now it doesn't have any sound it's pretty much dead okay because of the capacitor and again 90 percent 95 percent of the chance you get the x700 x570 it doesn't work it's because of that okay so next i'm going to open up the bottom plate of the x700 which is the next one that we're going to fix and hopefully get the capacitor replaced and we're going to test to see if that was actually the cost fingers crossed hopefully it is hopefully i don't have to replace the one on the top uh, yeah, that would be uh, such a hassle. Now to access the bottom capacitor on the X700 is actually a very simple, easy process. You need a flat head, uh, like a, I think they call it flat head screwdriver. The one for the Asian models a lot of times. Um, so this one I have kind of works. 
Uh, unscrew those four screws. Be careful not to strip them because they're really tiny screws. Two on the center is a short one and two on the sides are long one. And once you have that removed, you don't even have to remove the battery compartment, the bottom plate pops out. And what you see here, again, is that very, very bad capacitor, okay? Um, the crazy thing is they don't even mark the polarity on the uh, on this on this X700, and they made a few different versions, different models. This one doesn't have the polarity marked. So I have to go find out what is the correct polarity for the capacitor. And once I know that, um, I am going to actually, let's see, get one of those brand new Panasonic capacitors. Those are rated, I think, um, so those are the ratings, 150, uh, and four volts. I don't know what the unit is called, but 150 is is the unit of the measure, and this is a four volt capacitor. So let me go find all the polarity. I'm gonna remove the this one on the camera, and then we're gonna put this brand new capacitor on there to replace it. So interestingly enough, the polarity of the X700 and X570 slash 500 is different. Over here in the 700, this is a positive terminal and this is a negative. So in the 570, this is a positive and this is a negative. So that's why I want to double check. So in that case, we're gonna be aligning the negative terminal of the Panasonic, which is the shorter end uh, or the darker side uh, facing inside. So it's gonna be like this, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is desolder heat up those solder joints and remove this old one. And uh, I'm gonna cut the new one to size. As you can see, I cut some the, the pins already. I cut it a little bit shorter, and then um, I can hopefully get this solder back on there. Now, if we are lucky, if there's enough solders left, we don't even have to add additional solder uh, onto the thing. And uh, if we do, then we just have to do it, but hopefully enough solder will be left so we can just easily put the the new one in here. If you guys need soldering tips, my video is probably not the best place to go. Go watch some other YouTube videos on how to solder things properly. And uh, because I do a pretty crappy job. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and get this replaced and we're gonna test to see if this is actually the problem. If by any chance this actually fixed the X700 without me having to replace the top one, I'm just gonna make do for now until I get proper tools to remove the top. Uh, I'm not gonna even bother with the top capacitor replacement because that one is a little more tricky. Uh, I'm just gonna make do with the bottom one until the top one stops working, okay? So I'll see you guys after I remove the capacitor. So I just uh, took the uh, capacitor out and uh, it was like this before and I flipped it over to find out and double confirm that this terminal on the left is indeed positive and terminal on the other side is indeed negative, okay? So um, at least we confirmed that. Next, I'm gonna try to solder the new uh, capacitor onto there, fingers crossed, hopefully it works, and we're gonna test it with the battery in the camera and see if that would actually revive this dead, pretty dead X700. All right, so now I got the capacitor soldered onto the camera and uh, we would put a new battery in here and find out if it works or not. Right now there's no battery inside. All right, so I put in brand new batteries and I tried to test this uh, 700 and uh, unfortunately it's still not responding. So that makes me think I probably have to go ahead and also replace the top one. It could be the mirror uh, flipping capacitor that's also defect uh, before this thing can actually start working because you know it's gonna be working once you put it on the on with beeping. Any button you press is gonna have a sound or like if you're pointing at something too bright, it's gonna have a sound like the X570. But um, this one, 
unfortunately um i paid too much for this lemon because i am this one actually i bought locally uh the guy told me and guaranteed me that it works last time he used it but obviously this thing is been broken for a long time okay um something that you buy online is actually probably at at this moment up to your advantage because a lot of on online marketplaces have better protection um when you get a lemon you can always uh, return it if the product was sold as being used instead of sold as being for parts now this this machine i got nothing works like and it's very worn actually like if you look at the bottom of the plate by the way this is all plastic um, the first layer of the color, which is black, is worn off. Second layer is also worn off, which exposes the transparent plastic on the bottom. The Minota X500, X700 is mainly plastic. This is a very plasticky camera. Top plate, bottom plate is all plastic. Okay, so they look like metal. And if you wear it out, they they're very clear. They give you a second coat, which looks like copper, but it's actually plastic. Uh, with a copper color and a black color. So it's like two-tone color that Manonta put on here to imitate metal looking. That's why those cameras are actually very light as well. They're very lightweight for the size of the camera. Unfortunately for the 700, it's not working. Even though I put a brand new high quality capacitor on the bottom, I'm suspecting I actually have to take off the bottom plate and replace the other capacitor for the X700 function. That's why I highly go against buying 700 because to service it is such a hassle. The 570, even if you have a broken capacitor, um, they are very easy to replace uh, because you just have one at the bottom that's very easy to reach, very easy to solder. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you guys are looking for a vintage camera, I highly, highly go against buying the X700 unless you're the type that loves to torture yourself, okay? Get the X570 if, you know, electronic exposure, manual focus camera from Minonta is what you're looking for and you love Minonta's quite compact the lenses, go for the X570 slash 500, avoid X700 at all costs. This camera is very hard to service, okay? Interesting thing also, they are pretty much the same. And actually X570 also includes shutter speed info in the dial with a LED indicator, which the 700 actually lacks. The only thing that 700 has is extra program function, which nobody actually use. Like I've been shooting aperture priority since the film camera days and into the digital age, it's always aperture priority. I've never had a chance to use P or even shutter priority. So as like aperture priority is the way to go, X570 is a perfect camera. Uh, kind of at Minota's higher end of cameras uh, with electronics building with automatic exposure. 700, avoid. Please avoid. Please don't um, did what I did, which is buying a camera without even knowing that the camera functions. Okay. So my ultimate decision for the X700 is actually I decided to, I'm going to take apart the top and go ahead and try to replace the top capacitor as well as my last resort. And if that doesn't work, um, I'm just gonna sell this camera for parts because I honestly don't know what errors could be happening when the power is not on, when both capacitors are fixed. Okay, so um, that will be my, my last resort. I'll keep you guys updated whether replacing the top capacitor is gonna fix the camera or not. And fingers crossed, hopefully it fixes and uh, I should have two functional camera. Otherwise, I'd be happy to continue to use my just newly restored X570 over the X700. Oh boy, so I took the top off and uh, as you can see, this is not for someone with basic soldering skill to service and the crazy part, okay. Uh, so this with the top removed and of course the hot shoe components are still all attached. Uh, obviously, there's no way for me to remove it. I have to be really, really careful because those wires are super skinny. On top of that, that capacitor is here. Um, yeah, I have to find a way to actually access that capacitor without damaging anything. And uh, 
um, almost impossible. So at this point, I would say this is just going to be a exploratory surgery for me because again, I, I have no capability of carefully servicing that capacitor unless I can maybe unscrew this part and flip it over, remove that capacitor and put on, put a new one under there. It's going to be a crazy, crazy complicated process. Okay. I haven't seen any video of people servicing the capacitor on the bottom on the X700. That's probably why, because this is a job for camera repair professionals. It's not a easy job per se. Okay. Um, so another reason you should, you should not get the X700. You should get the X570 much, much easier to service if something goes wrong. And that thing would probably be guaranteed it's a capacitor. Okay. Oh my God. So hope you found this video helpful. And uh, if you did, please do hit the like button or subscribe. I have actually, I have some um, links on where you can get capacitor replacements um, in case your camera actually does need a capacitor replacement for the X700 or the X570 slash 500. Now, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.